Hey folks, welcome to a nice AC2 review. Um, first up, apologies that Mailbox Monday episode 32 had to be pulled really, really quickly. That should now be up again and re-edited, so apologies for that, but I had no choice, it had to be done. However, it's kind of a good thing because it leads straight into this particular video, so hey, maybe it was meant to be. It does annoy me though, OCD-wise, that it's not a Monday, um, but hey, <laughs> that is the world sometimes. Sometimes you have no control over things. So, anyway, right, let's get on with today's video. It's all about this bad boy here. This is the London S Stock Underground, sent in by a <laughs> sent in by two very, very generous, very patient uh, gents, chaps, from down south, I think. So I have the letter here from Ashley and Joe, who sent this in. But I'm not going to read it, just check the mailbox video episode 32 for the actual uh, content of the letter. Um, but I am hugely grateful to Ashley and Joe for sending this in because they really have, like loads of you, got incredible patience. It's, it's mad to think that this entire set has been sat here for so long waiting to be reviewed, but it's not alone. There is quite a lot of stuff that's sat waiting to be reviewed and I'm finally getting through it. <laughs> okay, so I asked Ashley and Joe for some details on this that I could put into the video and they were kind enough to get back to me and I made a quick note about the details regarding the actual train, the real life train, not the model, but the real life train. So apparently this is, as it says, S stock uh, underground rolling stock. It was built by Bombardier I think that's how you pronounce them. Um, there's actually a Bombardier site here in Crewe, but they just do bogey repair, wheel repair, axle repair, stuff like that. They don't, as far as I know, they don't build anything. <sighs> Crewe doesn't build anything anymore apart from um, pies and Bentleys. There we go. We make lots of pies and lots of Bentleys, but no trains, I'm afraid. But these were built by Bombardier at Derby. Uh, between 2009 and 2017. I've got it in my notes here. They entered service on the Metropolitan Line in 2010, so this is all pretty recent, and it does look quite new, to be honest. Um, they were in seven or eight car sets. Seriously considering applying to the council for a no-fly zone. Okay, so with caffeine running through my veins. Um, they were in seven or eight car sets. Um, the seven car sets were apparently used on the Circle Line, the Hammer and Smith Line, and the uh, Hammersmith and... Is it the Hammersmith Line? Gosh, what's it called now? That's going to bug me. Okay, I'm back. It's the Hammersmith and City Line. For some reason I have written the H&S Line, but of course it's Hammersmith and City. Oh gosh, you can tell I'm not a Londoner. You can tell I'm from 200 miles away in the northwest. Of course, it's the Hammersmith and City. So the S7s were used on the Circle, the Hammersmith and City, and the District lines. And then the S8s, the slightly bigger ones, which had a slightly different seating arrangement inside, they were used on the Metropolitan line. There we go. Whew. So that's more or less all of the information that they sent me on the actual real thing. Um, looking at the actual set then, initially we can see that it is very, very nice. It's a, well, I mean, we, we come to expect this from Batman. The packaging is wonderful, it's really good. It's a really nice box, there's plenty of colour over it, nice graphics, you've got a description of the stock on the side, you've got um, the code, it's 21 pin DCC compatible, which is really, really good. And I get loads of questions about the pins. Basically, the more pins the chip has, the more functions it can carry out. So, lighting, sounds, and things like that. I mean, in Germany and stuff, they've even got opening doors and all sorts of fancy stuff. But I'm afraid, here in the UK, people are still getting hung up on whether the doors are the right shade of red or not. Okay, so turning the box around and having a look at the back. And again, I will get onto the other side of the camera very, very soon. But, um, 
S-stop trains, authentically detailed model, London Underground replacing all their subsurface trains on the Metropolitan Circle, Hammersmith and City, it's even got it here. Right here. Um, designed and built by Bombardier at their Derby Works. So that's really, really cool. I mean, as far as I know, Bombardier are not British anymore. I think they're Canadian or sort of half American, half Canadian. But um, the fact that they are actually built in the UK is pretty good. That's pretty cool. Although probably the components come from China, Japan, Taiwan, everywhere, probably. I don't know. Uh, it says the train is state of the art, features air conditioning, walk through carriages, uh, they're designed for maximum passenger capacity and maximum comfort. Two types, the S8 and the S7s. Um, I'm basically just repeating myself, aren't I? Yes. Anyway, it doesn't stop here, it gets even better because Joe and Ashley even sent in Hello. So yeah, Joe and Ashley even sent in the extra cars to go with them to make up a full set. So with the four in there and then the four here, we've got an S8 set basically. Pretty sure these are just dummy cars, they're just empty, no motors. So the motors are going to be in here, that's what will make it move. If I can just reiterate how grateful I am that this has all been sent in, because I would find it really difficult to spend money on this because I'm just nowhere near London. I don't, I can't see myself ever making an underground layout or a layout that features underground trains. I just can't see that happening. So for it to be sent in for me to have a look at anyway and then return really is wonderful. I'm also looking forward to visiting their uh, local club that they go to. It'll be nice to take a camera down to that and check it out. So. Once again, thank you very much, Ashley and Joe, for all of this. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, this is actually take two. I did, I like pretty much did the entire review, but with the microphone pointing the wrong way. <laughs> oh, epic fail. I'm still getting used to this. I'm not used to doing reviews and I'm not used to my new equipment, so apologies for that. But hopefully you can hear me really clearly because I've actually turned the external microphone round to the correct direction. In fact, it's probably a bit too sensitive. I have noticed some popping and I think I need to get a cover for it. I do have one, but it's like ridiculously over the top. It's for basically standing on the top of Everest. Um, so I need to get a smaller one. But okay, here we are. Let's do a review of this. Um, again, once again, the reason I show the unboxing is not to show someone how to open a box. Pretty sure most humans in the world are capable of doing that. But it's to show you what it's like the moment you open it up and to see what you get and what it's like. It's a really nice box. It is really wonderful packaging and we've, we've come to expect this from Backman. So if I just flip it around onto the back, you can see that over here, You've got pretty much everything I've just read out to you. It talks about where the stock was built, where it runs, what the difference is between the different types of stock are. You've got the Bombardier logo, so obviously it's built under license. And then the London Underground logo, again, built under license. And then of course it's by Batman Europe. They show you, which is really good, and Hornby, take note of this. They show you where the units go that you've actually bought and of course, you can see the replace the um, sorry, replacement. You can see the additional units and where they would go too. So that's really, really good. People love that about Batman, and other manufacturers are now doing the sim uh, a similar thing. So turning the box back round, let's open it up at this end and pull out one of the units. <coughs> there we go. So that's um, that's pretty heavy. I re I reckon that's a motorized one. That's also pretty heavy. I reckon that's also a motorized unit. And these pair, <laughs> yes, they're quite light. So they must be the cars that go in the middle. Very, very quickly, let's have a look at the paperwork. In fact, if I was going to make a criticism, my only criticism is that these boxes are too tight. I think it can be really difficult at times to get the packaging back inside them and not cause any damage to anything. Um, but it's, it's only a mild criticism, obviously. So having a quick look at these two sheets. The first one here is your product warranty, how to join the Batman's Coll Backman Collectors Club, which is something I do need to do. And I do 
I do think there's someone at Batman waiting for me to uh, contact them about that. Um, so uh, I shall definitely get that sorted. A warranty service request, just in case you do need to get in touch with them regarding something. Um, and then this, this is here, this is what you need to pay attention to. So this basically runs through how to maintain and look after your set. And when you've bought something as fancy as this, you definitely want to look after it. So this first paragraph up here, all about running in, says that you need to run them for about half an hour in each direction first, which is something we're definitely used to by now. Then there's a cleaning and maintenance section. Uh, it says, uh, please take care when removing your model from its packaging, as Batman models incorporate many small parts. Uh, lift them carefully from the blister packaging, which is this technically, I call it the block of ice stuff. <laughs> do not pull the locomotive buffers and do not pull on the valve gear because you'll probably pull it off. Um, and then as for um, cleaning and maintenance, it doesn't really mention it actually. Um, it just says that it's going to need a bit of lubrication uh, after roughly maybe 24 hours of use. Um, cleaning the wheels and the track every now and again just to make sure that they get electrical contact. Definitely this line here, try not to run it on carpet if you can help it because they'll pick up fibres and the fibres get wrapped around the motor and stuff and it, oh, it just gets really messy. Uh, DCC decoder installation, uh, some notes on that about how to do it and how it will run on DC but you know try not to mix the two ideally if you can. If you're going to run it on DC, I always say if you're going to run it DC use a DC controller and if you're going to run it DCC use a DCC controller if you can, it's definitely better than mixing the two, trust me, it just is. Uh, a, note about, a notice about curves and then a notice about storage. It's pretty much common sense to be honest, it's stuff that we've seen before. But it's nice to include it anyway. And then moving on to the second sheet, um, London Underground S-Stock Train. Again we've got this typical exploded diagram here, but this is particularly interesting because Backman know that a lot of people that buy this are going to be pretty serious modelers and so they're probably going to want to make the set look even more realistic. How can you make it look more realistic you might ask? Well one of the ways you can make it look even better is to take the roof off and put people inside and it tells you how to do that which is really really cool. So from this exploded diagram here you can see that actually there's the different kinds of seating in this unit and it tells you how to take the top off and then basically you can sit little passengers on those seats if you want to. You can even install lighting to make it look very, very realistic and very cool indeed. And with it being a 21 pin DCC chip, there are plenty of functions there to control all manner of things. So if you've got the skills and the knowledge or the money, well, maybe all three, yes, you really can go to town and make this look incredible. Okay, so opening it up. Again, um, more exploded diagrams. Um, there's a bit over here on the DCC decoder. You can see uh, roughly where to fit it and how to fit it. Over to the left, there's a note about coupling the cars. It looks very, very similar to the um, Class 350 Desiro to me. And even the Blue Pullman, basically. So it looks like it's a similar mechanism and there might even be a little tool that's included to help you uncouple them should you want to when you need to. Again, a notice about running in, a notice about curves, a notice about fitting the decoders, and then um, an arrangement of the four cars in this train pack and where they, uh, could, where they go to, basically, which is really, really professional, really good. Uh, final diagram on the back talks about all of the components and the parts should you need to replace them or reorder them or fix them yourself or whatever. Really, really good. It's what we come to expect from Backman. So yes, very, very happy with that. It just seemed to be a bit of a crease of that. That's not me. <laughs> Maybe that's just the packaging. But as I say, it's very tight packaging. So moving on to one of these units then, let's take a look at this. It doesn't really matter which one we take a look at. They're both pretty much this. Well, they're not the same, but they've both got a motor in. So let's put one out of shot, carefully lay the box on the floor like this, get with the ends of your nails just into the side of the packaging, lift out this block of ice, <laughs> oh, oh, it's cold, and that's it. 
There's nothing else in there. Sometimes if this was like a single unit, a single loco, maybe a castle class, you'd find all the instructions and stuff there. Maybe some accessories, although they usually tape them to inside here. But in this case, nope, it's just this. And then basically what you have to do is you have to slide off a second sleeve and then you have to, where is it now? Ah, here we go. So you'll notice that there's a little hinged bit at one end and then again very being very very careful just remove the the the, the plastic assembly basically get rid of it gone there we go and then you're left with this okay folks i'm back and well what can i say you're just gonna have to help me out here i'm not an expert when it comes to this london underground stock i don't I definitely don't see it every day. Maybe once or twice a month. It depends how often I go down to Google and stuff. But it looks pretty fine to me. I mean, most of the time when you have um, solid molded pieces like this on a roof, they're usually just one color. Um, and if they um, have multiple colors, then it's usually multiple pieces. But look at this. This looks like it's a bit of an exception to the rule. That's just wonderful. All those little yellow bits. I mean, wow. Okay, the livery application looks flawless. It honestly does look absolutely beautiful. Um, if we turn it around to have a look at the end, well, again, what can I say? I'm afraid the camera, well, I'm afraid this particular lens will not give me a close-up like what I'm after. It seems like that's about as close as you can get it. It's clear, granted, I'll give it that, it's very clear, but it does seem like there's this sort of invisible layer. Like if I go too close, it goes blurry, and if I go away, it goes blurry. So <laughs> I'm just gonna have to do my best to keep it in that band. I definitely don't wanna turn the autofocus on because I don't think it's as good, but Wow, it's flawless. Honestly, I can't pick anything wrong with it at all. The level of detail is getting so good these days. Um, if I turn the unit upside down, you can see that there's some pickups there. That's definitely the motorized bogey. Just look at that. Although, hang on, are they traction tires? Oh my gosh, they are, aren't they? No, surely not. They are. They really do look like traction tires. Okay. Um, I don't know what to say about that. Is that, ne I mean, is that necessary? It's a good thing if it's necessary because it's obviously going to help the unit to run. But it could also be a bad thing because if they perish, and they almost certainly will in time, then they're going to have to be replaced. Uh, so, I don't know what to say about that. Hmm. <clears throat> just turning, just, just flipping the unit over, you can see that it's got number four written on the car underneath. We'll check one of the other cars to see if that says something different. Turning it round to the back of the unit, you can see here that's that coupler that was mentioned in the um, instructions. And as I say, it's almost identical to the one used for the Blue Pullman. So you can even see that there's tiny little metal contacts there. Um, and basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna transfer power from unit to unit and they're going to transfer signals from unit to unit, such as lighting, motor control, stuff like that. So that is really, really good. That's a definite, definite plus. So getting back to the detail then, well, I mean, just look at it. Look at the windows, look at the window wipers. I mean, look at those. Look at the light clusters. Look at the number on the front, even the digital display, the LED display up at the top. The, um, the doors, all of the warning symbols and things on the doors. The London Underground logo. The, the uh, Rolling Stock number. It's, it's flawless. Um, I'm not a London Underground expert, and there's probably a few people now shouting at the camera, shouting at the screen, I should say. Um, about something that's not quite right, but I'm afraid I cannot point that out. 
what I can see looks pretty impressive to me. So let's open the other motorized unit and see what that's like. Okay, so here I am with the other unit. Now immediately, this is different. We've got a little bag of detail here, a little bag of accessories. So there's a wheel, there's a wheel, hang on, maybe I do need to turn autofocus on. There we go, right. Okay, I've turned autofocus on, I just, I was getting fed up of having to manually adjust it every time. So I've turned autofocus on and you can see here in this bag, there's a, there's a couple of spare axles. There's some spare wheel sets here and they've actually got cogs on, which is really, really interesting. I've never seen that before. And then this is the tool. This is the tool that uncouples the units. You just slide this pointed end here, the wedge end, into a tiny gap underneath the bottom of the coupler and, and then just apply a little bit of force and then that's it, uncoupled, job done. So that's really, really nice. Um, actually, yeah, autofocus wise, it's working quite well, isn't it? Right, so a second block of ice. Again, same as before. Grab this end here where there's a bit of a pivot. Support the entire thing with your hand really carefully. And then just slowly remove the plastic. And there we go. So basically, yep, there we go. Very, very thoughtful of Batman. They really have numbered them. So this is number one. And again, you can see the electrical, electrical pickups, you can see the motorized bogey. Again, traction tires, still don't know what to say about that. It's good and bad. I'm sure everybody will have an opinion. Although it being Batman, it's probably gonna be genuinely a positive one. Okay, here we go. So the unit on the left is the one I've just looked at, and then the unit on the right is the one we're looking at right now. And as you can see, they're practically identical. Apart from one says number four and one says number one. Even the ends are the same, the coupling is the same, even the roof detail is the same. And I suppose that's what you'd expect, really. Um, I don't, I can't comment too much on the inside because I can't, well, I can, I can just about see the inside. Yes, I can, and you can see the seats there. Yeah, you can even see the different kind of seating inside them, which is really good. So. Wow, what to say. Um, I'm very impressed. I'm really, really impressed. I'm just going to grab one of the additional boxes just to see if that's any different. Okay, so here we are. This is one of the additional units that um, obviously doesn't come with the actual set, but you can buy separately additionally to help form a realistic set. Again, the first thing you notice is the weight. It's really lightweight. It's just like the dummy car just here. Um, is it numbered? No, it's not. It's not numbered, but it doesn't matter. It's fine. The instructions tell us more or less where this is supposed to go anyway. You can see it's got the contacts, just like the one down here. Focus. <sighs> I've had to switch back to manual focus. Oh gosh, I'm really missing this only now. Okay, right. So yeah, it's basically identical. It really is. The Everything looks the same, the moulding looks the same, the detail looks the same, the livery application is still really smart, the colours are just as vibrant, they look absolutely identical. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to satisfy a basic um, little bit of curiosity, and that was it. But it is the same, it's all good to go, and it looks wonderful. So the next step then, well actually, <laughs> The next step is to go and have some dinner. So I'm going to go and sort some food out. But uh, basically tomorrow, I'm gonna to be running all of this and we'll see how well it runs. Okay, hey folks, um, welcome back. It's you, you, it's just seconds for you, but it's been actually a, like a, a day or two for me because I've been working on other projects and things. But I'm back, I'm here, I'm ready to run these babies in. Well, to get them going around the loop and see what they perform like. Um, so I'm actually going to follow this guide here, which we had a look at uh, a moment ago. You can see that it tells you exactly where each unit is supposed to go, and then where the additional units are to go as well. So that's absolutely perfect, basically. So we're looking for uh, unit number one first. So that's this one. That's like pretty good, isn't it? That will do nicely. And that is on beautifully. Okay, and then we want actually unit number two. 
So that's definitely not that, that's unit 4. Um, that's not numbered. And that's not numbered. Uh, that's not numbered. That's not Okay, none of the others seem to be numbered then. Right, <laughs> I shall work out which one goes next and be back in just a mo. Okay, I'm back, I'm still here. Um, right, okay, so gigantic unrealistic numbers on the bottom might not be present on each individual unit, but what definitely is are the actual running numbers all on the side. And Joe and Ashley, who have sent this set in, have been so good, they've even managed to get everything to match perfectly. So, for example, this running number is 21088. This particular unit here is 22088. And then this one here is 23088. And if you look at the side of it, it really does say 23088. So then it's just a case of working which way it goes around. And you can do that by just looking at the connectors. I mean, <laughs> it sort of like takes me back to all those days when I used to play with the Brio uh, wooden trains that are connected via magnets and stuff. It's that simple. So just make sure that the wheels are on nice and smoothly. There we go, that's all you need to do. And then basically just grab hold of one end, grab hold of the other, and then slide the two together. And that's it. They're connected. So it's a case of rinse and repeat until the entire train is on the line. Ta-da! <laughs> Isn't editing beautiful? <laughs> the wonder, the magic of editing. Right, there we go. It really wasn't too hard, actually. Um, I suppose, to be quite honest, the trickiest bit was that I was running out of straight track. You know, I've got that curve over there in the middle of it. So I had to keep slowly moving, slowly and gently moving the train back and forward just to make sure everything lined up okay. Okay, paperwork out of the way. Um, I am good to give it some juice and just test that it does in fact work and does in fact move. So let's let's do that. Here we go. Oh. Right. Sorry, my um, for some reason my Gage Master controller was uh, out of calibration. Like it was saying that it was already at a speed of forty when it was actually off. So I've just had to recalibrate that. Okay. Let's pick a direction, and then give it a little bit of juice and see what happens. Oh, nice. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, this, is, this is what I hear about these reviews. They're going to get expensive. I'm going to want one of these now. I mean, that was just beautiful, that mechanism. And this is DC, folks. Can I reiterate, this is in DC, okay? I mean, the sign of a really good mechanism and a really good model is just how well it performs in DC mode. Because DCC is easy. Anything can go slowly and smoothly in DCC. So, yeah, DC is definitely the test. Here we go. Other direction, then. Oh, we've got cluster lights. That is a lot of train to move. And it's coping perfectly. And there she goes, folks. Running beautifully. Just look at this. Look at the size of this train! Wow! Okay, hey folks, once again, as is usual now, I have crept down into the middle of the night just to get some nighttime footage whilst it's really dark outside. And I can show you 
just how clearly the lights um, illuminate in this particular unit. I mean, just watch this. Look at that. It's incredible. Don't worry, you're all wondering where's the rest of the train. It's fine, it's just to one side. I only wanted to just demo the lights to you. But you can see the um, destination board, you can see the light clusters, and there's even internal cab lighting. It's incredible. <sighs> wow. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more juice. It should be fine. Just look at the performance of this motor, guys. Smooth as a baby's bum. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so slowing it down then, bringing it into the station. <laughs> That's it, let's, let's get it coming right up to sort of where the power connector is. Nice and slowly. <sighs> wow. Oh my gosh, Joe. And Ashley as well. I mean, obviously, I just... Ah, oh, I mean, wow. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's got me genuinely worried. I mean, the quality is so good. And the performance is so good. The detail is so nice. The livery is so splendid. The instructions are so helpful. Oh, and I've got to send it back. Oh dear, I'm going to have to start thinking of layout plans <laughs> that involve a London Underground train now. Hey peeps, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Okay, ready.